I should be seen and not heard. <laughs> you guys do know there's lots of people watching and listening to this stuff. Yep. So yep. we welcome them. Amen. All right. So people are getting healed all over the place. You're healed. We're all adjusted. We're all happy. Amen. We're a funny bunch. Not the fun bunch. We're the funny bunch. We're not just in looks. Why? Because we're peculiar people. God has always called us a remnant, right? The remnant, the peculiar, the strange. That's yep. us. We have the full description. As long as you're not granola and being a flake of fruit or not. <laughs> then you're all right. Oh, I'm going to sit in the church today. All right. <laughs> That's the cereal. Uh, if you stand up during the service, we know why. All right. At our age, fiber is everything, right? A great drain on Clean the drain. All right, today we're calling this seed of manic, right? Like, because everything in God it should be automatic already. Amen. I like things that happen even while I'm not working at it. Amen. How many know that your words are seeds? Amen. If you don't understand that your words are seeds, remember what Jesus said, whatever you say you will have and whatever you pray you will have. And you know that either on either side of that coin, whatever you say is going to happen to you. Yeah. If you say, I deserve you, you better understand what comes right after that. Amen. And you know you Portuguese people. <laughs> A lot of people don't quite understand how the real law works. Seeds always bring harvest, whether you like it or not. So whatever you say is a seed. Whatever you pray is a seed. You can flip that over. The only, the only difference is where it's coming from. The origin of your words. Either it's coming from a creative mindset of your head or the already finished. Hallelujah. Of the spirit. Whatever you pray is already automatic. Whatever you think is going to happen. The world likes to call that daily affirmations. They like to say... I got I to gotta seize the day. I got to, you know, whatever you conjure up in your mind. Like I said on Wednesday, uh, from a movie, a quote from a movie was, if I deserve it, the universe must serve it. I mean, you know that if your universe, that big, great black hole between your ears, conjures up something creative and you speak it, I mean, it's still going to happen. The, the creative DNA of the Lord is always through voice. Whatever you speak is going to happen. So I like to joke around because life is a joke. <laughs> Amen. Most ministry opportunities I get are a joke because it's just a recalibration of a mindset. All I got to do is flip it down into the spirit and then they're all healed. Yeah? This is not difficult stuff. You're never supposed to look at a preacher or a man of God as being some intellectually superior being than you are. It's supposed to be where I get up here and I tell you stuff that's already recognizable to you in the spirit. It's not supposed to blow your mind because your mind should have been blown by the cross. Amen. The, finished work of, the finished work of Christ should have blew you away already. Amen. So, I mean, you know, that we are now recalibrated back to the origins of Adam in the garden. Whatever you say. Remember, it's, it's time for the body of Christ to tend the garden, not to farm the land. See, if you're into farming, I mean, you know that that's going to take a lot of toil, which was the curse of Adam. Yep. Oh, some of you yeah. not even listening to me. If you're out here trying to work the kingdom, it ain't going to work very well. But if you're here to enjoy the fruits of the labor of Christ, then it's a restored garden. Amen. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not even blowing your mind, huh? <laughs> All right. So read with me. Christians must invest time. You know, time is your greatest resource, and it's also your worst curse. Because whatever time you squander, it isn't, isn't able to. You can't recalibrate the clock. The clock keeps moving. You don't get younger. Amen? So the enemy understands that his greatest, greatest weapon against you is to waste your time. He understands that. So while you're busy asking questions, how I many you know you're not working the answers already given to you? That's the essence of the curse of the enemy is that he loves for you to question authority and existence. Say amen. amen. There's a lot of us in this room with this whole week, we're just sitting wondering. How I many you know that's kind of ticking off the clock that he wins at? All right. He can't he can't kill you. 
without permission, that, that's Old Testament. He, he even had to ask to affect Job. Right? So we know that even in this day and age, the enemy can't kill you, but he can kill your time. That's all he wants. He wants to just block up time so that you, you just lose that opportunity. Amen? So he loves to do that. And he loves for you to say, well, I'm a spirit-filled, powerful man or woman of God. I'm a child of the king. All the while questioning your own existence. You guys Not see good. the trickery? Yep. Not good. It's just chunks of time that get blown right out of your lifetime. All right, so we got to invest time in learning how to operate in the kingdom of God system. Amen? And that's real simple. I'll teach you. Um, it shouldn't blow your mind, like I can say. Uh, when people don't understand the laws that govern God's kingdom, they're powerless. Amen? But we can determine our own outcomes by planting the word of God in our hearts and allowing it to produce the type of fruit we desire for every situation and condition in life. Remember, God is the unconditional God. Amen? Our minds love to put conditions. So many of you in this room right now, even though you've been sitting here a while, there's, there's, there's a part of you in your mind that tells you, well, I'm not being blessed because I'm not going to church. <laughs> of course! Of course! You know why? If that's what it takes for you to be blessed, then you better show up. Amen? Amen. How many know that the greatest thing you can do is understand that you are a seed? Seeking a harvest. If it takes for you to plant your butt in here as a seed for a harvest to take place, then that's the way you got to look at it. I better get there so that I can bring about a harvest somewhere in my life. Now, I'm not here to scold anybody about showing up. I, I'll preach to the chairs. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Many, many days I do. I have a bigger audience online than I do in physical form. But does that stop? No, I don't. it's up to you. You know, all I can do is give you the food. It's up to you to eat it and nourish yourself. You know, the, the Word of God is food. Amen. 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 Would you rather imagine, watch a commercial and eat a Whopper on TV, or would you rather go to Burger King and eat a Whopper? Oh. See, there's two ways to look at it. One is going to make you fat, and one going to make you hungry. <laughs> Amen. So you can stay away from church and stay hungry, or you can come in and get fat. This kind of fat ain't bad for you. It's good for you. All right, so the kingdom. There's two systems working in the universe, right? It's the kingdom of God system. And the kingdom of God, just let me remind you, although we capitalize it in notes, nowhere in the Bible is the kingdom of God capitalized with a capital K. It never is. It's never capitalized kingdom with a capital K. Why? Because it's not a place. Just to remind you old timers who still don't get it, the kingdom of God's system is a system of order and action based in faith and love and hope. Let me know that the kingdom of God's system is not a place you go to, it's who you are. You are, according to Paul, you are an ambassador. Everybody know what an ambassador is? It's a person who represents another place and comes and he is sovereign to himself. Let I me mean, you know that every one of you in this room is sovereign to the kingdom of God. Not in place, but here you are. You are the kingdom of God. It's the way you say, think, and do things. Your flag flies high. The enemy knows who you are. He knows that he can't touch you. He knows that you are sovereign on the earth. He knows that he can't affect you. But he can make you alter your behavior to represent his world rather than your own. Oh, preach it. Boy. Go on, preach it. <laughs> so I've said this before and I've thought this before. If let's say the uh, the Japanese embassy sends out his ambassador in his limousine out into the streets of Honolulu, let's say. He's driving around and he's speeding going hundred miles an hour on the H1, which is impossible by the way, because there's too <laughs> many cars there. Anyway, but he's going hundred miles an hour and a cop pulls him over. You know what the cop has over him? Nothing. 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 He can issue all the tickets he wants, but that car, that person is Japan property. It is property of the nation of Japan. He has no power over it. Say amen. That car doesn't even have to stop for a police officer. 
Did you know that if he drove onto the property of the embassy of Japan, even though it's on U.S. soil, it is still Japan? Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Right. There is no legal authority for any law enforcement officer to step onto the property of Japan and enact any American law over the a Japanese person, place, or thing. So for you, just so you understand, you are the kingdom of God. How you know the enemy is powerless over you, except if he can get you to think a certain kind of way. Say amen. So if he can get you to behave like a worldly person, Although you are a kingdom property, I mean, you know, that's how he wins. In the world system, time is everything because they say time is money. And most people's problems originate with money. So if time is money, I mean, you know, that if he can waste chunks of your time, he will squander chunks of your money. Your currency, your property value, and who you are as a sovereign citizen of God is powerless in the world system if he can get you to think that you are powerless within that system. You can be full of all the power of heaven, but yet be on earth and be powerless as an individual. You can have the kingdom of God stamped on you. You can be the, the greatest, highest ranking ambassador of the kingdom of God here on earth, but still have poor mentality because you switched over to a world system mentality and he has rendered you useless. Amen. Some of you looking at me with big eyes. <laughs> this is how it all works. You're not from this world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is not greater than you. God has made you his personal emissary, his personal representative here on the earth. But yet some of us behave more like the world than we do that from the kingdom that we're from. Hallelujah. You're sovereign. Everyone say, I'm sovereign. Because the devil has no power over me. The only thing he has, <laughs> if you really want to hear it, the only thing that he has over you is that activated mindset that he conjured up in the garden within Adam. He was able to get Adam to activate a worldly mindset all the while being the garden's ambassador. Hallelujah. A garden doesn't have to be farmed. It has to be kept. With the word wilderness, all it means is one of the definitions of the word wilderness is an unkept garden. So when Jesus was tempted and taken into the wilderness, all that was happening was Jesus as a sovereign individual was taken into an unkept garden to enact his power. Hmm? Some of you will get it next Thursday, full party. I always say next Thursday, full party. Hallelujah. Because some of us just don't get it because we've never been taught it this way. So we always... We always put a question mark. Are you sure, Pastor? <laughs> Brah, I'm sure. I've lived a long time, 29 years. Again, this song is 31st. I've lived a long time working the world system. Well, you know that that world system hasn't worked. Oh, it, hasn't. it hasn't worked. Although I can't connive my way through it. I can scheme my way worm my way through it. I mean, no, that it's still not working for me because I'm not from here. I'm from there. Yeah, um, yeah. Praise God. <laughs> you know, it's funny. And people, they always say, oh, you master pigeon English, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my birth certificate, I was born in Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, I came oh, here <laughs> when I was two months old. Because in those days, you couldn't fly an infant. You had to wait till they were at least a month or more old. My mom went into early labor in Baltimore. She hated Baltimore because my dad was from there. She hated it. Wanted to come home and give birth when she went into early labor. I guess I really wanted to come into the world. So my birth certificate is actually from Maryland. But, hey, I don't know. I, nobody knows. Unless I say. I mean, you know that nobody knows that you're a Christian unless you say, act, and do what your kingdom dictates. Yep. 
Don't worry, no. You can go out and dance on the table whipping your bra in the air, ladies, right? <laughs> you can do that. But does that reflect the way you're from? No. You men can walk around and schmooze you away with all the girls, but does that reflect where you're from or where you're at? Amen. <laughs> we eat living bread, which is the word of God. Amen. Or oh, we can eat marijuana brownies here on earth, right? So it's all reflected, all reflective of who you really want to represent on any given moment. So right now you're in church, everybody puts on their holy faith. Praise God, good morning, how are you? But then you turn around and say, I don't know why I'm hot damn hot. <laughs> Two reflective personalities, right? Do we all have personality disorders? No. You should be the same person in church as you are outside of church. You should be the same person in the workplace as you are here. I mean, you know that there is no distinction except the enemy just laughs. <laughs> Look at them representing my kingdom. Look how quiet it gets in church. <laughs> That's the mark that I'm doing good when you all get silent. It means uh, work in your mindset. Amen. All right, so you understand seed time and harvest. How many know that God sent you as a seed? Like I said before, how many of you feel like you are the black sheep in your family? Raise your hand. You know, I know because you were the seed into that family. Oh, no, what? You were the one. Everybody thought you were the rotten one. You were the seed into that family tree to disrupt the whole tree. Amen. Tell the truth. How many of you really feel out of place sometimes in your own family? Everybody's an angry oh, yeah. individual. You're the happy one. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's dumb, but you're the smart one. Yeah, yeah. Well, true. you think you're the smart one. Right? Yeah. Okay. So. Everybody's white. You're black. Fur, that is. Amen. It's because your thinking goes against the grain of the family tree. Why? Because you were the seed planted into that family tree. Many of you question, why God? Why did you set me amongst this bunch of idiots? <laughs> Yeah. It's because you were the seed for change in your family tree. Amen? In that mango tree, you're the one light tree. <laughs> everybody looks at you, well, this is so out of place. You know? And you're the one who goes into the family party, everybody talk about you. Why? It's because you have the stamp of approval of the kingdom of God. You have God's stamp on you. Why are you the one that goes through all the mental stress for your family? Because you are the seed for change. You're the one that changes the whole tree. You're the only one probably that prays. Not just pray, oh, Father, help. No, not like that. You are the one that prays and he goes, Ah, oh, God, look at these people. Because you have a more direct connection with God. Why are you the one that suffers through sickness, illness, and disease? Because you're the one that takes on the burdens of your family. Amen. So don't look at sickness, illness, and disease as evil. From, it's because maybe you can handle it. That's why God gave it to you. He gave it to... Oh my goodness. Are you serious? You are suffering because you would rather take it than have somebody else in your family suffer. Thank you. Because you can get rid of it. They probably couldn't. Why do you have the money problems? Because you can handle it. They can't. Why do you have all the mental stress? Because you can handle it and they can't. You have a direct connect right to God's throne. Because where are you seated according to Ephesians 2, 6? In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, at the right hand of the Father. You can handle it where others cannot. Why do you think this church is this size and not 5,000? Because we're not the 5,000 kind of church. We're the one for our family church. You all represent big families. Right? Am I right? Because you can handle your family's burden. So don't look at yourself and say, I don't know why me. Say, thank you, Lord. It's because of you that's why me. Because we can show them how we fix things. This is how we do it, right? All right. I hope you're happy today. Yeah. I just gave you all the blame for your whole family. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> because why? Because you can handle, bro. You can handle, right? 
Just saying, in a funeral, who do they pick to talk? You, because you get the biggest smile. Nah, that's just because you get the biggest smile. You're the mouthpiece of the Lord. Let's clean that up. Yeah? You know the right things to say in any situation because God chose you to be in that family. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that you're not lightning rod even for your friends? Why? Because they do all the stuff and they'll point their fingers at you while it's because of them. Why? Because you can handle it. So, let me ask you this question here in church this morning. How many of you are handling it? Yep. Or are you saying you're handling it? Oh, well, like, oh, my God. Yes, praise the Lord, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Duality. Dual personality disorder. <laughs> Remember, Adam was created one way. When the enemy came, got him to blame Eve, boom, a dual personality came on him. Yep. Boom, he started blaming her, and then his activated mindset. All of a sudden, he had two so clothes together made of leaves. <laughs> Fig leaves, mind you. But the world thinks he <laughs> ate an apple. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. If this is the first time you hear this, that's the lunacy of the world. The enemy likes to say, See, the enemy can never take responsibility. He can't even take responsibility for getting them to eat a fig. He tries to get the world to think it was an apple. You can see already he tries to get dual things. He always tries to defer or deflect blame to something else. So the poor apple tree gets the blame for the fall of man. You see how the enemy works? Hello? Some people still believe that Adam ate an apple. Him and Eve was like, oh, apple. Yeah. Oh, run to the fig tree and make clothes. <laughs> See, half of this room is quiet. Like, what? An apple? Why would Jesus curse the fig tree? If it was an apple, wouldn't he have cursed the apple tree? We might be the smartest people in the kingdom of God. Yeah, look at that all. Yeah. Now that we wrapped it that out, <laughs> apples get a bad rap. That's why nobody likes to really drink apple juice. Oh, yeah, apple beer. Oh, that was nice. Some of you like fig Newtons. Because yeah, of the curse yeah. of Adam, I don't like fig. <laughs> that's not fig Newtons. Yeah. That's not good. yeah. That's not good. <laughs> See, most people like either crunchy food or soft food. All you guys that like soft food, you're just older before your time. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, crunchy right. cookies, not soft. Not, I am not maraschino. With those little seeds that you cannot get out of your teeth. Yeah. I don't know. Jesus likes figs, evidently. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. He cursed them. All right. So for me, uh, I like, this is what I like, <laughs> nut or butter cookies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I have to switch it over now from the three cookies. I'm going to ride this bus all the way with me. There's two kinds of nut or butters. Do you guys know? Two, yeah. right, what, what? Okay. Cookies and wafers. Yeah. Right? Oh, the wafers, man. Oh, the wafers, man. Yeah. I'm just sure the wafers are the best. I like those. Yeah. You know what? You can tell when you offer somebody the wafers if they're really a pig or not. Depending on how much they crack off or the pig. How many of you run in fours? How many of you are polite and run in twos? How many of you are Chinese and break off one? Or a couple of liars. A whole sheep. A whole pot. You see, that's the guy right there. Half the pack is gone. Hey. <laughs> I like them both. Amen. <laughs> it's all good. Amen. I'm good. Some of you went to the store right after this to check your another bottle supply. Say we empty a bottle. All right. So if you want to check yourself, really, huh? the kingdom of the enemy is people because the kingdom of God is not a bottle.
All right, so let's get to it, all right? So to operate in the kingdom system. Everybody want to learn how to operate in the kingdom system? I kind of outlined it already. Your words are seeds. That's how it starts, right? So if your words are seeds, how many of you need to check your word seed? You need to check how you sow things. How many of you know that you can sow all the right words, but your attitude might be bad? Oh, oh, the B attitudes. Anyway, the attitude behind everything reflects your true heart condition. Amen. So, how many of you can say, I love you, praise God? What do you say? You know you. I love you, you know. Two different attitudes. Which one do you believe? Well, in certain situations, you may believe the harsher one rather than the soft one. I well, you know that everything has an attitude behind it. It either reflects a mindset or it reflects the true nature and essence of God. So you have to be careful with your attitude. Before you say anything, you should always check your attitude and where it's coming from. Amen. So to operate in that kingdom system, we must reject the values and standards we learned in the world system. Because that reflects your attitude. And we need to embrace God's way of doing and being right. So in Matthew 3, which we threw it up here today in the Amplified Version, but gee, you can look at it, the whole schematic here. Now look at verse, uh, chapter 3 in Matthew. The first three words tells you a story already. Okay, It says here, in those days. So let me just share that with you right now. Because there's a lot of churches out here preaching in those days as if it's these days. We're not in those days. We're in this day. You get it? All right. So some people, and I'll just say well-intentioned preachers and teachers of the Word of God, need to understand the present tense and the past tense of the Word. Some of them don't know the difference. I don't know if they were in Hawaii public school system. But it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter where you got educated. It's how you walk in your education. Amen. Amen. Many of us here graduated from the Hawaii State Public School System. Some of you didn't. Some of you never even finished school. But praise the Lord, <laughs> we can all make sense out of the Word of God if we understand present day truth. Amen. Amen. Everybody say that. Present day present truth. Day. Not past day yeah. truth. It's already talking. In those days, John the Baptist appeared preaching in what? What is the wilderness? The unkept garden. So it was the garden that was established by the enemy through Adam and Eve's fall. He appeared. He was preaching in that unkept garden of Judea along the western side of the Dead Sea and saying, Repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking because there's a new thing about to happen. You see it? Regret past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life. This is the Amplified Version. It, it already uh, gives you definition within the scripture. Okay? Seek God's purpose for your life. What is your purpose for your life? If you are the seed for your family tree, what is your purpose? First of all, it's not to act like your family. It's to act and reflect the way God brought you into this earth to be, not... Oh, God. Anyway. Hallelujah. <laughs> For the kingdom of heaven, notice the word kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not a place. Sometimes you got a point. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. It's not that. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Sorry, right yeah. I'm going to circle up for you. Because it's not a capitalized thing. That's where error comes in. You see, if it was meant to be from a place, it would be capitalized. You guys all learned that Hawaii public school system, right? A noun is a person, place, or thing. You guys remember that? Schoolhouse rock. So that would mean if it was a kingdom, it was from a place, that would mean it would be foreign to you. But it's not foreign to you because it's God's way of doing things through you. So that means it's you. Amen. Huh. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I, go ahead and go look it up, guys. Go look it up. I'm telling you, there's a lot of error forged in people who don't understand proper English. Right? Or any English or any words, how word structure works. 
And it says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the one who was mentioned by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one shall be where? What is the wilderness? Prepare the road for the Lord, make his highway straight, which are level. For you know, as a Christian, you're supposed to be level and direct. Your words are supposed to be precise and even. You're not supposed to be yelling at people, telling them how to live. Amen. John the Baptist did that because he did that in those days. Yep. Um, just for let's slide on to verse one again. That was John the Baptist's job in those days, preaching, crying out in the unkept garden for people to get ready. Because once Jesus comes on the scene, I mean, oh, it's time for a different way of thinking and speaking and doing. And that's us. Because Jesus' last words on the cross were, it is say it louder. It is finished. But what was finished? Those days were finished. Oh, Hallelujah. I hope you guys are getting this. You're making my own beat you. The old ways, the old days, the past was finished. What does that mean to you? Oh, good. I like the pigeon. Power already. <laughs> you know what is power already? Yeah. Not pow. No. P A U. Pow. Finish. Old things have passed away. Right? Second Corinthians 5 17. Yeah. Tell you. Behold. All things become new. All things have become Brand new. new. So, what is new about you? Well, you're the seed for your family. So do you behave, speak, and do things differently than your family? Yes, you've already been stamped as the weird one. Which really means you're the normal one in the kingdom of God. But in the world system, you're the weird one. Because you think, speak, and do things differently than your family. Amen. Most of you in here did all of the things that were rebellious in nature to your family. I'll just let that sit in for a while. You were the most rebellious one in your family, all the while acting like you're the most innocent one. Everybody else was rotten, but you were the rotten one inside. And you did your stuff in secret. Yeah. But you acted like you're innocent so nobody knows. Why? Because that's the way you were working your duality. Amen. Most of your siblings were rotten, doing things out in the open. You were doing it in secret. Amen. Right? So you knew who you represented, but you wanted to get away with it. Yeah. Amen. You wanted to prove to the devil that you could beat him up on his own turf. <laughs> oh, well, acting like you're from heaven. <laughs> See, some of you like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it works well for you. You know why? Because now nobody can get away with nothing. You catch him. Because you were like them. Amen. Amen. Oh boy. I got used to it. We're not going to have the biggest church. You know why? Because we're all the secret society. <laughs> <laughs> you all recognize each other. Because you, know, like, well, you know what you got away with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The band of brothers and sisters. We're the secret society. Yeah. All right, so the old ways are all done, amen? But in those days, I mean, you know, if you look at this carefully, this is what John the Baptist was preaching, right? Now remember, if he says the kingdom of heaven is at hand, everybody pick up your hand, your right hand represents authority. The kingdom was at hand. How do you know that the kingdom is at hand? Whatever you do with your hand of authority has to happen. How do you do it also means, at hand means it's imminent. It's about to happen. Everybody say, it's about to happen in those days. After the finished work of Christ, it already happened. In this day. And we are still walking in present day truth and reality. Everything that Adam lost has been restored into us. Don't doubt everybody. <laughs> Let them go. They all want to talk to you. I tell you right now, the fastest way to get into a debate with somebody is say, all sins in the universe were forgiven. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I 
guarantee you that some people will fight with you and debate with you for the right to go back to hell. Even though they say with their own mouth, Jesus is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. If Jesus took all the sins, why are we talking about it? Just look at your religious mind. You want to debate. There's a part of your activated mindset that wants to fight for the right to go back to hell. Instead of walking in your forgiveness, you want to walk in consequence. Instead of walking in unconditional love, you want conditions put back on you. Instead of being free and free indeed, you want to be a slave again. There's a party that wants slavery. Because you want to behave in a fashion that says, I don't know I did wrong. Help me. That's not a good me. Shut up. The best prayer I can give anybody is shut up. You know what you're doing. Just stop. But, but my family, oh, my father, Pinya, oh, my mother, my cousin, my ex husband, my ex wife, my exes all wear Rolexes and live in Texas. <laughs> Bro, not for it. Except personal responsibility. Amen. Because you know the truth. Why? Because the Bible says you know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So am I going to help set you free? No. Wrong answer. The truth, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He will set you free once you realize that you're seated in him in heavenly places, according to Ephesians 2.6. Stop acting like it's not you. It's you. Who's your worst enemy? The devil. No. You. 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 Your activated mindset is the you we're talking about. Some of you are going to leave here today and just sit there. I don't know what just happened. Because I'm here to discombobulate your brain and get you to walk in the spirit, in the newness of life in the spirit. Stop blaming everybody else. Amen. Hallelujah. That is good. Amen. I was in Waikiki last week walking, right? Walk because my son he gets me parking in the parking structure, so I gotta walk to the hotel. I stay up because I cannot stay at this hotel because it's always full. <laughs> I'm walking and this guy on a bicycle, on a bicycle now, going the wrong way. <laughs> and he runs into a car. <laughs> And he yells at the guy in the car. Oh, yeah. I should do that. Oh, like, hey, what's up? You don't see me on my bike. And the guy said, I saw you on your bike. Get the hell off the road. You're going the wrong way. He's like, shut up. You're not going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> this was a true reflection in my mind of the body of Christ. God is giving you the way, the truth, the light. You're going the wrong way and you blame me. The, oh, Get off your bike. What is your bike? Your high horse. Anyway, you went the wrong way against the flow of God and you blaming God. Yeah. Many people get into prison. God, why? Baboos, you went the wrong way. <laughs> you blaming God for your life when he's giving you Ephesians 1 says he's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. That's why you got to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. You walk in the flesh, you get what the flesh offers you. Hallelujah. Hi. I'm Pastor Tim. Welcome to my world. Don't worry. I get preachers that write to me rotten, evil stuff. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. Sin has to be paid for. Well, then you don't believe in Jesus. That's all I write back. Either you believe in Jesus or you don't. Oh, don't worry. There's people. There's people. Or they get one of their people to write to me instead of them because they have no... I, I, I would say if they were Japanese, the name would be Noboru. Or Nomoboru. Anyway. Because you can't do it themselves. You got to seek somebody else on me. And you know what? I'm not going to change my message just because of somebody. I don't suffer from rejection. 
People say, oh, how do you feel? You lost, you lost it. No, I didn't lose nothing. Amen. You don't lose things in this world. Paul said, to me, it's all gain. Yes. That's right. Amen. You gain something. In losing, you gain something. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who cares about Just live your life and be happy. Yeah. How are you going to be happy? Help somebody else. Thank you. Yes. Help somebody else. You know, in your circle of influence, there's always one low you gotta help. Exactly. Or in Hispanic terms, local. One local one. There's always that one person in your life. You know who? Okay, well, some of you like, Pastor, teach me discernment. I don't know how to discern who needs help. Look for this face, the biggest bottom lip. That's the one. That's your ministry. Right? Every day there's at least one up to a million. At least one, no? Who come with the big lip and the sad puppy eye. That's ministry for the day. Right there. Sometimes it's the same person for 25 years. Because we know it. We wake up next door. You're it. Let me pray for you. Wow, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Somebody want to do that, right? Remember the attitude. Watch it. <laughs> all right. Uh, if you look at all this, okay, let's slide up a little bit. Just, just for the sake of it. It's not in the notes or anything, but verse 4. Now, this same John had clothing made of camel's hair and a wide leather band around his waist, and his food was locusts locust and wild honey. Everything means something, right? The belt, of course, so that you know he distinguishes himself from being a lady, I guess. Anyway, but the camel's hair, you know, this is a beast of burden like an ox, so that camel's hair. Let's just say John was a strange cat. Very different. Very, very different. Why? Locusts, I mean, the locusts are bugs. He's eating bugs. The, the locust was a creature, a bug of destruction, so he was feeding himself destruction because he wanted to dominate destruction right. all right wild honey well wild honey i mean like he had to go get it from a place he didn't go down to safeway i mean like he had to go wrestle with the bee and the honeycomb get the honey out and eat it you know, this, this is a strange dude i don't know what he was smoking but this guy uh, was out there At that time, Jerusalem was going out to him. So people were coming to this guy. Like, hey, who? I mean, know that not everybody, just the strange ones. Yeah. Right? The peculiar ones who go to him to be baptized. And because and they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. I mean, know that this was already a reestablishment of something strange because remember now, the Day of Atonement was the Day of Blood. They were coming down to the Jordan to be washed in water. So these were very peculiar people. They weren't subscribing to the order of the day religiously. They were already trying to say, there must be a better way. I mean, you know that in this day, not those days, in this day, people are coming to you to be cleansed of their sins. Why? Because although Jesus has a finished work and product, I mean, you know that religion tells you it's not real. So people are coming to you. Why are they coming to you? Why are you a catalyst and a magnet for these kinds of people? Because you have the answer they desire and seek. Amen. They want to be set free. So many of you are so free indeed that you're still walking like the world. Stop walking like the world so you can recognize ministry opportunity. Alright. Look at this verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, you brutal vipers. You know what? These were people, this is duality. They had a mindset that was different. See, they would come, what they were trying to do was trick him or trap him. Today, we don't have Pharisees and Sadducees. I've told you before, we have cannot seize, wouldn't seize, will never seize. All right? They come into our church, they come, they check it out, they sample it, and they walk away and say, ah, 
you know what? They think they know everything. They're wrong. They're so off. Their doctrine is bad. They have an evil thought. You know, stuff like that. That's what John was calling them. Brutal vipers. They come to strike. They try to take a chunk out of you. Or to poison you. Because what does a viper do? He tries to kill you with poison. So what they're these Pharisees and Sadducees were coming to try and poison what was being purified. Amen. See, John Baptist knew. <coughs> Who warned you to flee from the divine wrath and judgment to come? What he's telling them is that you guys believe in divine wrath and judgment. There's a freedom coming. Yeah. Right? Oh, he will, he will decipher that on your own. Amen. I can't give you all answers from there. Somebody will get mad. <laughs> So some of you cannot tell a joke right. You mess them up. Don't mess up the punchline. The punchline is, he whom the sun sets free is, is, everybody say is, present day truth and reality, is free indeed. You're not going to be free. You is free. Oh, I say public school system. But I is free. Amen. We're going. All right. All right, now back to your notes. You guys got that? You guys cool with that? All of that stuff? Yeah, I'm not supposed to be here blowing your mind. I'm just supposed to be here reinforcing your spirit. You know? If your mind gets blown, come out of your mind and into the spirit. Thank you. That's my public service announcement. To repent is to... Oh, what? Say it again. How many of you know that you are free indeed? So you're supposed to already think differently. Why? Because you don't think with your head. You think and ponder in your mind. Right? You, you guys know that in Psalm, they always have the word Selah. And C-L-A-H. What is that supposed to mean? Positive in the spirit. Not in your head. Right? Because the head has no value. All of you. I got used to it. Your head has no value. So when somebody calls you, you stupid head. Amen. Disagree with it. Because your head has no value. Yep. Yeah. And it's whatever comes out of your heart that means everything. Okay? Because the word says, let this mind be in you. Amen. Not in you. In you. Jesus said, say to this mountain. Remember when he said, yep. you, will, you will say to this mountain. If he was pointing at Malachi, like I said before, he wouldn't say this mountain. He would say that mountain. But he said, this mountain, I believe he was pointing at this mountain, which was trying to exalt itself because that's what Paul wrote later. Every argument that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. This mountain. Some of you are stunned. Amen. <laughs> Not bad for a boy who grew up on Aquila. Amen? Amen? Not bad for a guy that went to Kapilani school. He was intermediate. Hilo high. Not bad. You know why? Because I was always taught to just read the words and take it for what it means really. Don't try to make things up. Intellectual preachers don't make things up. No, just take it for what it's worth. Amen? This mountain. This is the biggest mountain in the world. You know why? Because you can't climb to the top of it. You must exist within it. That's the truth of the reality is you can't climb this mountain. This one always tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. The word knowledge, Jesus said, you will know the truth and truth shall set free or make you free, certain translations. So if truth and knowledge work hand in hand to make you free, then what's going to stop you? Yeah. Alright, some of you get it. Next Thursday, 4 30, right? yeah. <laughs> Reading, hearing, and speaking the word enables us to change the way we think. You guys know that there any one scripture that you finally get can set you free and on the course to something else. Because it says that life is a pathway illuminated by the word of God. If you're not getting illuminated by the word of God, 
then you are in the dark, trying to go in the dark. Because if Jesus is the light of the world, and you're in him, you're glowing in the dark by yourself, looking at the path. God is what? Law. It's a law that governs all spiritual principles. So there is a law of life in Christ Jesus, right? The word says. Yes. There's also the laws of Moses and Leviticus. The Mosaic law was brutal. Yes. Ten commandments, I mean, you know, we're paid for in full. Yes. Right. Everybody say amen. amen. I'll, I'll share with you. Okay, so you guys remember Old Testament teaching? If, you, if you're new to Christianity, just bear with me. The tablets that Moses brought down, amen? You guys remember these things? Etched by God, amen? Later on, the Ark of the Covenant that Moses had to have fashioned, do you remember this? And his staff was put in the Ark. Also the tablets, and a couple of other things, sealed, amen? The Ten Commandments were in there, so they would always carry that Ark, all right? And it had two angels on top, wingtip to wingtip. You guys remember this? They made out of gold, pure gold. Okay. So upon this, you remember this thing was so holy that nobody could even touch it except the high priest. Remember it was slipping off the cart and the guy went to catch it and he died instantly because you're not supposed to touch him. Yeah. All right. Well, later on, amen, how many you know that Jesus is in the tomb, dead, amen? That later on, somebody comes, you guys remember? And the stone rolled away. He's the fulfillment of the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. The angels that were wingtip to wingtip, forged in gold, now are in the tomb, sitting there alive. Oh, sorry, you're not even there. Why was there two angels in the tomb? Because they released Jesus from the law. You guys need more time to think about it? Right. Um, remember, again, for review purposes, Jesus, remember, Adam and Eve were gardeners. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Right. They were cursed to be farmers. All the lineage of God were farmers all the way because God said to them, right, all the days of your life you will toil. You will have to work. Remember Jesus, he would take dirt, spit in it, and he would create things. You guys remember that? Yeah. Amen. When, when the prostitute was brought before him and they wanted to stone her, Jesus said, you without sin, cast the first law, stone, stone her. Jesus doesn't look at her. He plays in the dirt, recreating her. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, as long as you know. This lady, <laughs> later on, fast forward, she comes to the tomb looking for Jesus, doesn't find him, sees a man, supposing he is the gardener. You guys get this? So Jesus went into the tomb as a farmer, came out as a gardener. That means he restored the whole thing. Oh, Some of you got it. Yes. The rest of you, say, next Thursday, for Thursday. We're all gardeners, guys. But we still have farming capabilities in our mind. We still try and conjure things up and work the system and it don't work. And then instead of just doing and being and having you being, you know, you know that we're trying to work a schematic that doesn't work. Yeah. The only thing that works is seeds in the basket, money seeds to grow money, I mean, you know, word seeds to grow life, yeah. and you as a seed into humanity to help bring more into the family. Yeah. All right? Anybody got any other questions on that? No. Got it. All right. If you saw our planning blankets, you can get planning blankets. You notice that you don't get a lot of underwear because you don't usually drop your underwear off in goodwill. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Who would want those anyway? <laughs> All right. All right. So the word of God is the law that governs spiritual terms of all. When people don't know and understand the word, it's impossible for them to experience success in God's kingdom. Because the word is a seed that's deposited into you. It's not coming to you. It's already in you, Paul said in Romans 10. He says the word of God is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. 
it's already pre-installed software. How many of you ever bought a computer? If you turn it on, what do you see? Microsoft, Windows. What if you never have that? You have to do your own. You're like, what do I have in computer? What am I doing? What do you do now? Right? Because it's pre-installed, don't you like? You can look around. Right? You didn't buy any software yet, but it comes pre-installed. How do you know that you can turn pre-installed? Whatever other apps you put on top of that is you. Take out the peas. Anyway. Somebody get that next time. Remember now, the word ass is not a bad word. It represented a beast or a creature of burden. Right? That's why when Isaac and Abraham go to the mountain with the servant, the servant says, Master, would you like us to go yonder with you? What does he say? Stay with the ass. Some of your attitudes need to stay with the asses in your life. Tied to a tree of some sort. According to the Bible now, it's not according to me. Abraham said, Tie to the tree. Tie your ass to the tree. This is straight up King James Version, guys. I don't make this stuff up. I'm not here trying to be gross and negligent. I'm just telling you, Abraham said that. Take the ass, stay with the ass, tie the ass to the tree. You know what the tree represents? The crucifixion of Christ. You guys get that? So all of this is comedic humor in some sort that God has. That You know that God is funny, right? Because tell God your plans and listen for the answer. <laughs> this is what I want to do, Lord. How are you going to do that? You can't even manage one dollar. You like one million. Oh, <laughs> Everybody has these grand plans. Lord, if you gave me a million dollars, this is what I would do. Like, I gave you one dollar last week, but you didn't win them. You win enough with the tax. You got to look for the fish in the ocean that Jesus sent from coins for the tax. Anyway, some people, they have these grand plans, but they're not good at what little they have. Amen. Jesus thought that what you do with the little is what will happen with the much. Amen. Amen. Some of you are on track. Some of you are starting to tie and give offering. You're on track. That's good. Let me tell you why. Tithing erases the curse of the law, the requirements of the law, which Jesus already did, by the way. But there's a thing with money that it has its own little thing going. So you got to give a portion to get the lot. So you do that with the expectation, like, okay, that curse that the enemy has tied into my money is eliminated. Now, the offerings that you give are the ones that bring in the hundredfold. Some yes, of you have learned sir. the spiritual truth. Amen. I can Preach tell you right now, if you, are, if you understand how money works, uh, money, according to the Bible, it says this, the money is the root of all kinds of evil. Money in and of itself is not evil, yes. but it's the root of all kinds of evil. Right. So all you got to do is be smart and just say, okay, Money is not going to make me its slave. I'm going to be the master of money. And when you're the master of money, more money is delivered to you. Because you're a good steward. You understand how it works. So if you want your one dollar to turn into many dollars, you just got to be a good steward of the one dollar. Don't say, hey, you know what? One dollar don't mean nothing. Yeah. How many know that's a bad attitude? Yeah, very much. You understand how the principle works. I would say a good place to be is 20 cents out of that dollar. Give to God the 80 cents. Go use it however you feel necessary. And then watch what happens. It delivers itself. It constantly does it. That's not me making the rules of the game. The game is there to be played. You all played some kind of sports before or some kind of a game. There's rules to it. Don't you hate when you play Monopoly and somebody make up their own rules? You guys, you guys know how it works, right? You start off with a certain amount of money. This is the rules of life, right? Here. You start off with a certain amount. It's what you do with it that brings in more. Don't you hate when somebody gets hotels and you land on their hotel? 
All of a sudden, you want to turn into some squatter that wants to kill everybody. And throw them all anyway, I don't like playing already. Things happen. Anyway. Well, you see, they learn the rules of the game. You all know the rules of the game, right? You like smoke cigarettes, smoke from your excess money, not from your necessity money. Somebody that borrow? Yes. Fastest way to quit smoking is no buy and no borrow. No borrow. No buy, no borrow, no borrow. You take away your ability, so you know that you eliminate the habit. That's right. You know what I mean? Guys ask me all the time, Pastor, help me out with quit drugs. Easy. No buy and no borrow. They look at me like. But that's not going to be delivered. Yeah, it is. You got to deliver yourself. How many of you subscribe to the to the newspaper and it's delivered to your house? How many of you? But oh boy, it broke out. Anyway, <laughs> but, okay, maybe that's a bad example. But if you really wanted to read the paper, if you really wanted to read the paper, there's only two ways you can get the paper. Online, online, online. online you still got to pay. Yeah. No buy, no borrow. But if you really want to read the paper, you would have to go go buy or go borrow. Yeah. Well, third option is <laughs> all the you just walk out of Seven Eleven real fast. Or you buy one, take five, and sell four, so you get those three. I guess there's a myriad of options in this house because you have all mastered crime. Some of the most creative criminals in the world are in church. You know how I know that? Because most people try to connive their way through those spiritual laws and get away with it, and you come in here, you're missing something. Your teeth, your hair, your eyes, your... Some of you have a missing personality. You gave it to somebody by sleeping with them. Oh. Order in the court. Hold tight. Hold tight. That's exactly what happens. You sleep with somebody, you trade. Sometimes the trade not so good. Amen. Yeah, you smart, they dumb. Hello, yeah, hello, you want that. I'm so dumb. Exactly the trade off. You did not want it. But we can fix all of these things. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Just call the pieces of yourself back to yourself and get rid of the ones that you took. Yeah. I don't know why I did that. Exactly. You behave like someone. Alright. Everybody good? I'm not scolding you. I'm instructing you. How about I'm constructing you? <laughs> See, man. You know, I can bring up any one of you up here and you can tell us all your history and we'll be like, Amen! Amen! <laughs> Nobody in here would be mind blown. You'd just be like, Mmm, did that. Mm. Mm. Nobody in here would be like, Oh my God. That's why you're in the right church. <laughs> We all did that stuff. Right? Mm. And they would tell this story, and most of you here would be like, that's all. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's it? You know. It's like when I went bankrupt, 750000 IRS, somebody comes to me, I'm like, I can't sleep at night. Hey, I want my IRS, three grand. That's all. That's all? <laughs> that's it? Like, oh my God. That's, this is the church of love. That's it. <laughs> you guys have mastered life. That's why you're in here. Amen. And a child shall leave them. Yeah. I'm the biggest child. I look at you and like, oh my God. Oh, oh, I was bad. <laughs> I did some stuff. But I'm not going to say why. I'm transparent. But not that transparent. Really? Yeah. 
Hallelujah. We all know the way out, right? Because we all have a pretty show us the way. And if not, you were your own best attorney because you told your attorney how to do it. <laughs> and, and I'm not talking about a legal attorney. I'm just talking about the know-it-all inside of you. You all have the know-it-all attorney inside. Mm. Because if you ever saw the merch lane going into KL, or KL, everybody's thinking, I wonder how. I bet you I can get along with this. No more cars, they come to my way. People do stuff like that. We all look for loopholes, right? Hallelujah. It's the, it's the principle of the change. You guys know what the change is? Yeah. How, how about this? Okay, you go McDonald's, right? They give you wrong change. Yeah. As long as you drive away and it's more, it's like, thank you, God. What a but if the girl shot you the change, oh, I curse you, I'm going back in there when I turn 18, I'm going to kill it. What country is she from? Don't get caught American in my name. Anyway, that's why I say it's a principle of change. Loose change. <laughs> Some of you get that next Thursday. Some of you go, oh. I'm going to sell five hour energies out there for five dollars each. I'm going to make you buy one every day. Alright, so the kingdom of God system operates according to the principle of, read it. Alright, so maybe you can read. Private school, Marcy Van Marinol. I don't know why I say public school system. She went Marinol. Catholic school. That's why she came on evil. Alright. Because Catholic kids are way off. They all thought to do this Hail Mary full of grace. How I can win this race. Anyway. And then they go out and then they go out and they do all the nasty coming out confession. Oh, the forgiveness for all sins. My last confession was last week's other day. You did what in one week? Oh my god. Alright. <laughs> Let's all read again. The kingdom of God system operates according to Christmas, seed time, and Come on, you guys are good. All right, in the same way that farmers plant corn seed, you guys know what corn seeds is? They resemble corn. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know you were eating seeds? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that corn is not a vegetable? I learned this on the cooking channel. You know what corn is? It's actually a reed or a grass. I was like, what is the biggest grass seed in the world? Because it has a stalk, right? And it has, like wheat, it has kernel. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's not vegetable. Shucks, my food chop was all off. <laughs> Starch, 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 meat. Yeah. Carbs, 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 and meat. I was wondering why my pants was in fitty like. Like, you ladies, on a certain age, you give up the zipper and the button. And it's right, take the finger in. Go with the elastic. I'm tired about the bed and try to pull this tire out over the car. <laughs> We're going with elastic. And I'm like, nobody see my size. I get four sizes, but it ain't small, medium, and large. Because <laughs> if you go with the button and the zipper, you gotta go with a number, and you don't like nobody know your number. Because numbers are judgment, right, girls? Because if you get up into the XL, L, XL, all you can say is like, ah, PMS, bloated. <laughs> that week of the month is all week, all month. But if you got a number, it stamps you, right? Like it's blazed in your 
brain like, oh my god, I'm size 18. <laughs> and it ain't my age. <laughs> I'm just teasing, because men too. They like to squeeze one, 48 into one 38. <laughs> they go, oh yeah, I weigh 38, yeah, I'm not a stomach. I lost by the way, you know, I'm down to like 34, 36. I'm like, wow. I went and I put on one of my old pants, it was 45. I put them all the way all the way up to my neck. I was smuggling drugs on these guys. The drug in the world was me. Anyway. In high school, I was 33. I was like, oh. I remember my friends were like, oh, about 28. Now I'm thinking 28. That's anorexia. <laughs> I'm going to make a shirt for all of us in this church, okay? And it's going to say, I fought bulimia and won. <laughs> Tell me when you get it. <laughs> I fought bulimia and won. Oh my God. It was all of me inside double X and triple X. Because you fought for Lina and you won. <laughs> so, are you getting it now? No, not yet. Okay, let me explain the joke. I gotta explain the joke. It's not a joke anymore. Bully makes a what? Skinny. So, you fought Bully and you won. You guys getting it now? So, I mean, slow, slow to arrive. Your train left the station a little late. The limits look like skeletons, but you're not on skeleton because you won. I'm gonna put prosthetic ministries. Let's just say you guys are healthier than most. If there was a nuclear holocaust, you would all survive longer. <laughs> I don't know the cockroaches, but you eat the cockroaches because you're hungry. No more food. So the roaches, thereby, will not survive your Holocaust. No. I just told my volleyball team that the other day. The ball was falling and they're always running everywhere. I was like, you guys can play in the kitchen at night, you turn on all the light, you turn on all the light. My volleyball team don't even get me started. They watch the ball fall. Like it's, like it's a meteor shower. And they stand around like it's a campfire. They're all in one circle and a ball fall right there. Everybody warm your hands. Keep up the marshmallows. Don't get me started, I'm telling you, I get more. All right. Yeah, well, okay, I got you back on track. You're playing Mellow House. Yeah. You fought Bolivia and... Wow. Wow. One, okay. Welcome to the Excel and Mellow House. Okay. All right, so farmers plant corn seeds. seeds to produce a harvest of corn. corn. All right. As Christians, we must plant specific seeds from God's word into our hearts to produce the results we desire. Anybody went to the carousel and spin the seeds? And think to yourself, this great idea. You woke up early. I have an idea. Many people have ideas every morning. I'm going to plant a garden today. So you go down to the seed store, whatever your choice is. You spin the carousel. And you start looking at the finished product. <laughs> Amen? Am I right? Or am I wrong? They don't just show you pictures of seeds. They show you what? They don't tell you all the process involved with this. So when you buy the seeds, and you're like, yes! Come on. <laughs> all of you get this idea in your head, and this is going to just go in the ground and poof! It's like Jack and the Beanstalk. Let me turn these beans up. Oh, 
What's all involved with this bald girl? You wanna be a redneck farm? <laughs> oh, first you gotta prepare some kind of soil. Whether if it's in a pot or in your yard. I can tell you already, you start digging your yard, you come against ah uh ah, -uh, you get no ah uh ah. -uh. Like, Pretty soon, you're sweating, and not from menopause or menopause. And you're like, I need a break. And you go, and you never come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a bunch of rocks on the side, and your foot does. And you're like, ah, bum bye. Bum bye for local people is never. Some people, they're real meticulous, they buy the pot, right? Or they do the square foot cutting, right? They get the plank, they put all the dirt down, and they put, and every day they come look. <laughs> no, too much yet. <laughs> Next day. <sighs> Pretty soon you start seeing other things pop up. Right? Like, oh, here it come, here it come. And it's all grass. And then kicks in the spirit of Bombay. Because you don't want to weed all that out, right? Eventually the seed comes up, right? I mean, you know that one day, hopefully more than one day, your crop comes up, and what do you do then? You know that 90% never come up. Why? Because people stop tending the garden. So what does that mean? Well, wait, let's put, okay, you guys like Benjamin Franklin? So you put one dollar in your hand and you, hallelujah, you gotta tend the garden. You know what tends the garden? I'll tell you right now, a good attitude. Because most of us have stormy weather on the horizon. Let me just ask you this way, how many of you are snap cases? Let's go, honesty is the best policy. How many snappers in the house? What delays any garden from growing? Stormy weather, snapper. <laughs> I'm in a room full of liars. <laughs> you're not a snapper, you're a liar. Anyway. Because everybody in this room, the only reason you're here is to curb your enthusiasm with F-words. <laughs> And those that don't externalize, they internalize. I just go take a walk. I just go take a walk. <laughs> well, stormy weather doesn't mean anything other than you are basically delaying your crop from growing properly. So you gotta keep seeding. So some of you, I got news for you, sitting on a mountain of seed that hasn't erupted yet because you're still a snapper. Or in a court. You just gotta check your attitude. That's it. Is that hard to do? No. Next time you wanna snap and choke somebody, don't even think about it. Just say, I love you. <laughs> Smile with your Asian eye. Ah, <laughs> uh, everybody got Asian eye. Anyway, if I went to any of your houses right now, I could see if you're a snapper. Because you got dents in your wall. You got broken door knobs. The door stop on the back is punctured through the door guard. <laughs> I go to people's houses, they ask me to come bless the house. And you know what? This, is, this doesn't take prophetic wisdom and insight. I just look around. And I can see already. If you're pukas, this is what I say. You guys have a lot of anger in this home. <laughs> you know what the answer is? They baffle like, oh, you know. <laughs> Bruh, if you can see them, then you don't know you have a problem. <laughs> if I see cobweb, if I see dogs, if I see dirty, you know what I say? There's a lot of confusion. <laughs> Wow, okay. D 
there is prophetic insight there. All right, because you got to be able to recognize. If you walk in, you're like, oh, I don't see nothing, and poop is everywhere, and, and shotgun fight at the OK Corral, you know, and you don't see, oh, yeah, I don't see nothing, and you're done. And, Prophecy is, I would say, about 90% common sense, right? You just look at somebody and you can see, you're like, you don't find anyway. Why? Because you have solved your problems. If you've solved your problems, you can recognize other people's problems pretty fast, right? And then the, whatever you don't know, the Holy Spirit will share with you. All right, so harvest is like that, right? It's obvious if you want corn, you plant and what picture do you look at on the package of seeds? Oh, this look like corn. <laughs> oh wait, it says soybean, green corn. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> you gotta understand what you're dealing with. There's a process involved. You, you gotta first work the ground. You gotta work your attitude, boys and girls. Right. Make sure the soil is good, right? Because even Jesus said that the words are sown into your heart. I mean, no, you can't have a hard heart. You gotta have a soft, pliable heart where you can deposit word seeds. Yeah. You guys all hear? Some of you, you wonder why everybody laughing because you just woke up from a long winter's nap. <laughs> <laughs> Specific seeds. Alright? Healing scriptures are planted in our hearts. Produce healing. What kind of healing scriptures? By his stripes, I was healed. I mean, no, that's a scripture in Peter, right? By his stripes, I... In Isaiah, if you go Old Testament, you say, by his stripes, we... Okay, that cancellation scriptures produce. And my God shall supply all I need according to his riches. Amen. Does he? Yes. yes. But what's in the way? Stormy weather. <laughs> Stormy weather will keep even God at bay. Amen? How are you going to snap it up? God, what? How come? What in that? <laughs> if I was God, I'd be like, what? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just wait a little while. <laughs> How many of you wish you were God? I can tell you. If all of you were God, I mean, no, there would be a lot of smoke signals in Hilo. <laughs> you know what I mean by smoke signal? Yeah. You'd be like, oh, you got that car. Big cloud of smoke. <laughs> oh, one of God operated over there. Oh, 20 Joka and Panero. Well, it's not for somebody. Apo Kalmano. Why get Luca? Baby Kill will be gone. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> How many of you your workplace would be gone? <laughs> they went to the DMV. Somebody was standing in line too long. <laughs> oh, they won't drive a license in. <laughs> Who would you burn first? Oh, oh, it's only you like, hmm, stroking your own beard or non-existent Portuguese lady beard. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that sometimes, like, hmm, if I was God, would I be a God of unconditional love? <laughs> no, that's why I'm not God. That's why we gotta behave like God, amen. Gotta realize who our Father is and where we're seated. Where are we seated? If you just say, in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. So you behave like Jesus. Aren't you glad when God looks at you, He sees Jesus and not you? Because otherwise you'd be. <laughs> 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 So salvation scriptures and they produce one. Salvation. Don't be Portuguese and go salvation. <laughs> salvation when you don't stop drooling. Exactly. Yeah. Many Christians lack knowledge and they expect to receive a harvest of something that they never planted in their 
hard, Amen. because their hearts are hard. If you're a person that constantly blaming somebody or some place or something, some episode in your life, you have a hard heart. You need to shake that up. Amen. Right? Your heart doesn't look like this. It looks like this. Well, punch your face with my heart. Everybody relax. If you have problems, relax and just see your doctor. He has a prescription just for you. Yes. Like, Pastor, you advocate taking pills? In some cases, yes. Because up here, it's not matching down here. You need something in here for match this with this. Until we can get you shaped up. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with pills unless you're abusing them. If the doctor says one a day, you take eight in one day and wait seven days to catch up. You smoke the whole bowl. Oh, my God. oh yeah. <laughs> medical marijuana, you think I don't know? It doesn't take much to know, and I'll hug you. We track your age, don't stop. I don't know what's wrong. Oh, uh, 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 do. Anyway. Why does the word do have to be associated with people who smoke weed? Do. <laughs> you laugh with your eyes closed. <laughs> your clothes smell funny. We can smoke your sweater. <laughs> All the residual crumbs and mm, crumbs of weed and cookies. Chinese, uh, yeah. cookies, chips, cereal, lucky charms, pasta, pasta flavors. Just pour them up in your mouth and then dump them off. Yeah. You see, this is a room full of medical marijuana experts in here. Some of us know, I don't know, I think I've lost it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a cookie addict. No, no. Okay. Is that right? Too much truth. It's some people like. <laughs> blow, blow that out. All right. You see what I say? Certain little things people kind of like. Blow that out. The kingdom of God system back on track, guys, is governed by. Thank you for me. Which is C, but some Christians believe that their hopes, needs, and desires will move God to grant their request. God is not moved by your emotions because that represents part of your activated mindset from Adam's curse. That's right. God is like, I hear a voice of one crying in the wilderness. But when I look up here, I only see Jesus. Jesus, you have indigestion? Someone's crying out of you. Get it? Uh, you'll get my humor one day. Hopefully more than one day. God has already provided man with? Everything. Everybody say everything. everything. If you locals say everything. 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 That's why I'm Everything. We need to shape his destiny. He wants you to be able to move forward with confidence. He's given you everything and you're asking him for something. He has ever realized that? If he has given you the keys to the kingdom, he's restored everything to you and you're still asking him for something, one of you has mental illness and it ain't God because he doesn't have a mental mindset that he operates from. Am I right? You know what mental illness is? It's not these guys that are institutionalized. It's Christians walking around with an activated mindset thinking they can fool God into getting what they need spiritually when they're in the mental. That's right. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Practice. No. Yeah. God gave man, read it, total dominion over the earth and enough seed to determine his own course in life. You know that even though Adam and Eve were cursed to farm, God didn't withhold seed from them. He still provided it. 
to them. Say, go. Now you got to do it yourself. Instead of creating with your words, now you got to create with your hands. But he didn't withhold. Amen. Even when Noah brought all those animals on the ark, God still saw fit to see the world. You know why? Even though the whole world was obliterated, how many know that the dove still came back with something? Amen. 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 And whatever wasn't seated, still lying out there, was in the animals what they had eaten. You guys know when a bird comes flying over here, yeah, and <laughs> something will grow. You guys understand that, right? All right? Some of you are the bird. You take your mess all kind of places. And you don't know, realize when you go over here, everybody acting up. You go over here, everybody acting up. I don't know how. You go over here, everything acting up. You're a kooka. <laughs> you guys want me to be real? Just fake you out up here. The most common denominator, if you go everywhere and there's trouble everywhere, guess who it is? <laughs> you cannot have trouble in everybody's family that you were in. That's why all your exes wearing Rolexes. Because <laughs> you go over here, I hate you, ah. Give up half your stuff. Go over here, I hate you, give you half your stuff. Pretty soon, half of, half of, half of, half of, half is zero. <laughs> and you want wondering why you don't want nothing. But you still mad. <laughs> Some of you girls are God's prized packages. You end up taking your beauty into a rubbish dump, hoping you're going to change that into the kingdom. <laughs> Remember, if you marry a guy that come out from the landfill all dirty, and you're dressed like a princess, thinking you're going to change him, it ain't going to work. Ain't happening. You know why? Because where does he still live? As soon as you clean them up, you go back home. Yeah. And you go drag you. Come, honey, babes, babes, honey, babes. Come be my friend. Yeah. And you're going to be like that. Before you know it, all your old clothes were your new clothes when you arrived. How come you wearing polka clothes? Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you. I love you. This guy is rape, pillage, and strip you clean. All you are a tree trunk. And you're hoping fruit will come out of that. My ministry is mostly women. You know why, right? Because I'm a father figure. So what kind of advice do I give my daughters? Run! Run for the... <laughs> it's better out there, girls. <laughs> But if you love, oh, then I cannot come against your love. Just don't make your love mental love. That's the, I love him. You know, I understand I love him. I don't know if that's unconditional. <laughs> I'm going to change your gospel. Pray for me and pray for him. <laughs> Usually I don't. <laughs> That's <laughs> how you know that even though you praise God, God sometimes just says, nope. nah. uh, Everybody, let's congregate here and watch this entertainment. This is our channel. The, the whole universe is watching you. Check this out, guys. Watch this. I can't write this. They go to church every Sunday. They see, they tie everything. Watch this attitude. Everybody, everybody, everybody. <laughs> we know you. <laughs> and God is like, Anyway, you're God's favorite channel. Because there's sitcom and drama, all in one, has horror, suspense, everything. You are better than Lifetime, Hallmark, and we all wrapped up in one channel. You are HOBO, Hobo, a Hobo channel. Let's watch. Watch these Hobos at work right now. Don't be a hobo. God has made you a king and a queen. Amen. Don't mistake being a king for a queen.
In fact, you're all kings, regardless of gender. Amen. Amen. Is that better for you? Some people think I'm picking on them. I just think it's funny. Just picture me with lipstick. <laughs> and spandex. <laughs> and pupa. Pupa. <laughs> and And my best effort at shaving. Talking with my neck, and you know what? <laughs> Girl. Girl. All right, everybody happy? Yes. So you gave me total dominion. No. People perish because they what? Fail, fail to become proficient in God's system of seed, time, and harvest. Is that hard to understand? No, it's not. A heart is like fertile soil. It's a place where seeds stay root, grow, and eventually branch out and impact our lives. Do you guys agree with these things? No. Yeah. God made man from the dust, the dust of the earth so that seed would. So seed grows, isn't it? A heart doesn't discriminate between seeds. Whatever is planted and nurtured will grow and produce a heart. So let all these evil guys into your life. I mean, that's what happened. I'm just trying to be real with you guys. Seeds of death, selfishness, jealousy, lust, and other works of the flesh produce death. death. While seeds of life, which are love, temperance, virtue, the fruit of the spirit, produce life. This is not rocket science. Right? Seeds enter our hearts through several means. Eyes, ears, mouth. When we see, hear, and speak words, which produce corresponding thoughts. I mean, your thoughts become your words. Your words become your reality. Why? Because creative DNA. How does God create? Speaking. 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 Words. Words. So what creates your life? Words. words. The number one seed is your... The finger. Your words. The finger. Pastor Jeff said middle finger. <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's one of two fingers, guys. <laughs> or, anyway, all right. Life is what we make it. God instructs us to study His word constantly, protect our heart from bad seeds, and avoid speaking negative words. Oh, I know you guys all have long times. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 24. Let's look real fast. We've already had a couple sets of scriptures today. All right. My son, it says, what is this? Proverbs what? Proverbs 4. Verse 20, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them where? In the midst of your hearts, the middle. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs issues of life. Right? Verse 24, put away from you a Deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. You can read the rest later, right? So what is it basically trying to tell you? Take the word, put it in your heart, and operate from that standpoint. Right? Because all of us come with pre-installed software and we also come with pre-installed software. <coughs> Hello? Yeah, okay. For you computer geeks and nerds, for those of you, here's your hard drive. You want to say hard drive. And then you have an external hard drive. <laughs> so are you getting it? What do we call this one? Hard drive. And then you have one. External hard drive that was installed based on where you grew up and what family you came from. Amen. Some of you want to march with a sign and protest everything. Because that's what your cohorts do. Some of you want to love and accept and forgive because that's who your true family is. Amen. Look at verse 27. Don't turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Amen. Now I'll show you a picture. Oh, 
Giulio. Poi sono stato che hai explained the joke. You remove your foot from your mouth because your mouth is evil. Your feet talking for your mouth. Okay, you guys all got that joke? No, no. This is, by the way, science 14 for those of you who are interested. Because I know that I've shown you the illustrations of you go, what the big you speak on? <laughs> totally left field. Like, out the lunch. All right, back to the notes. I think we're just about done, yeah? yeah. All right. So, sorry. We control our own destiny, but we allow to enter our hearts through our mouths, ears, and eyes. We determine our futures by... Planting the appropriate seed starting when? Today. 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 You guys don't get it? Don't be little or for Danny. <laughs> Come on, everybody together. <laughs> the worst choir in history. <laughs> tomorrow, God will bless me tomorrow if I don't screw up on today. Get it together today. You'll be all right. Amen. Amen. The Word of God contains every type of seed that anyone could ever want to plant in his or her heart, as well as a seed that will change every type of negative circumstance. Reading, hearing, and speaking specific scriptures that relate to your circumstances is the key. Really? You believe that? To receive the things that you desire from God? Just say the right things. Amen. You don't even have to start with the word of God. Start with your own words of you, you, your own God. Amen. Change your words first. And when you read the word of God, it will make more sense to you. Amen? All right. I am complete and done and finished. Stand your country butts up. Because <laughs> you're not going to be country after this. Amen? Yeah. 